about as close as you're gonna get, not Cher, it's my friend Lisa McClowry, who, great singer in her own right, but does this show where she becomes Cher. What? It's, it's wow. unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She, she looked just fantastic. like her there, that was amazing. The, the, the Beat Goes On show is wow. what it's called. Wow, amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah, she's great. All right, All right. so, so very excited really about Cher? that one. It sounds just like her though, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. sure she's did. All right, let's do the nine at nine. Here's number nine. There's no reason why women should be the only ones with a fancy engagement ring. Yeah, there is. Tiffany and Company just launched its newest line of men's engagement rings. Oh, Lord. The rings are understated, but elegant. Are They're they? Created in the signature <laughs> of Charles <laughs> Tiffany's setting, featuring the bold solitaire diamond. They're also a symbol of love and inclusivity, since not everyone wants to follow the tradition. The price is available upon request, and uh, if you have to ask, you probably can't afford it, but... So we have to buy yeah. that for you guys now? No, you don't. I think that's a big pile yeah. of crap. That's Listen, good. let me just say that coming from a family where the men frequently wear diamond rings, there's yeah. nothing understated about it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to play that down? Yeah, there's no way, especially when it's on your pinky. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing yeah. understated. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a little more subdued if it's on your ring finger. Maybe it's not as, you know? Yeah. Maybe not. So then are you getting a wedding band on top of that? I don't know. I, I, I'm not Just buying it. I mean, <laughs> who's buying it for you? Not I me. mean, yeah. Well, if you really nobody's love them, buying you would. it. Nobody's buying it. Oh. 11 people tweeted about it, and now it's yeah. a thing. <laughs> it's yeah. in our show. Uh, number eight, David Letterman has never been shy about describing himself as an average student. Uh, he graduated from Ball State in 1969 without much distinction. So when he started a scholarship at his alma mater in 1985, he jokingly said he wanted it to go to a C student. And there is a bit of a catch to this scholarship. It's based primarily on creativity, not grades. In the telecommunications department, interested students must submit a creative project such as writing research, interactive media, or websites. First place gets 10,000, runner up gets 5,000, third place gets $3,333. Past winners include a kid who wrote a satire of Pride and Prejudice and another who made a stop-action animated film of a penguin climbing a beer bottle. All right. Mm. I like that idea. world is run by C students. That's what yeah. they say. Yeah. All right. Number seven, fun fact about President Jefferson. He liked or disliked formal affairs. According to historians, he hated them so much he would often greet foreign dignitaries while wearing his pajamas. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Let's get to it. We don't need to oh. be sitting around chatting. Yeah. We're really digging deep for the fun facts, aren't we? <laughs> All right, there we go. Patrick. All right, number six. You're looking at Europe's first 3D printed home. A couple in the Netherlands just moved in. The 3D house was built in just five days after being printed out at a local factory. It's made up of concrete elements printed by a machine that spits out layer upon layer of concrete, almost like a toothpaste. The walls are hollow, so they get filled with insulation. Finishing, finishing touches, like the roof, also get added. It's got two bedrooms. Homes like this one will rent for just uh, under $1,000 a month. I don't understand how this works. I don't either. So they're printing it with, but it's printed concrete? Yeah, I don't know if they just print out strips like toothpaste and then they just pile them on top of each other. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's, hmm. that's how they do it. I don't know. <laughs> We're just guessing, it, of course. Don't. <laughs> it's only Monday. We want to start <laughs> yeah. slow like an airplane and right. slowly yeah. Yeah. get off oh, the that's ground. Right. All that's right. right. That's fair. Number five already. Here are some fun facts. There's some disagreement out there, but it is generally accepted that Willard Scott was the first TV Ronald McDonald. In the early 60s, he was the Bozo the Clown for a station in Washington, D.C. He would appear in character for McDonald's. He says he pitched the idea of the burger chain having their own clown, and he suggested calling him Donald. They liked one idea, but not the other, and in 1963, he became Ronald McDonald. And three years later, McDonald decided to duplicate Ronald's 
all around the country, but mm. they thought it would be hard to get uh, chubby guys like Willard, so they made him thinner. Uh, they say a full-time Ronald can make roughly $40,000 a year and is forbidden from disclosing his identity to the public. Uh, another sterling resume for a TV weatherman, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A cute, he was a cute little McDonald's guy yeah. in that last picture. Number four, we know dolphins are smart, but did you know they make excellent wingmen? They actually help other dolphins get dates. Ah, a recent study shows that when male dolphins need help corralling a female, they rely on bonds of friendship. But it's more than that. Dolphin relationship scientists say it's not the strength of the friendship that's important. The dolphins actually keep track of who has helped them out in the past and they return to those same dolphins over and over again when the time comes. You can read them more about it in the journal Nature Communications. Oh, let me write that down. Yes. Yeah, I think that, again, projecting. Hey, these are dolphin scientists, relationship scientists. I mean, I think they would know, Paul. All right, forgive me, but I think it's. Not all dolphins can meet their spouse at work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. I'm not I, taking it back. I still think it's uh, us uh, projecting yeah. stuff. Number three. Boy, I've got three reads today already. Right, it's is, Monday. It, this has been an awkward it has been start awkward. of the show, hasn't it? We're just out of sync today. Anyway, go ahead. All right, now that Mother's Day is over, it's time to focus on the dads. And here's something from the Bradford Collection, a World War II aircraft with a little something extra. It's not just a sculpture of a B-17 bombshell bomber. <laughs> it also holds a fancy collection of Zippo lighters. Oh, that's nice. Nothing says, I love you, Dad, like a collection of Zippos. By the way, we found this ad on our popular mechanics magazine. So if Zippos aren't Dad's thing, maybe popular mechanics is. That's two gift ideas in one nine at nine thing. You are welcome. Thank you. Look at that. Boy, both of those. Hmm. All right, number two, we have one more bit of trivia about a huge hit from a 1980s John Hughes movie. Don't you forget about me. Don't, 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 don't. Don't you forget about me. So that's the song, Don't You Forget About Me, from The Breakfast Club, 85. It was written by a producer named Keith Forsey, who was scoring the movie. He was a huge fan of the band Simple Minds, and their label arranged for Forsey to meet them backstage. And while they were in the middle of a world tour, he did. He was excited, but the band was not. They declined, so he pitched it to Brian Ferry, then to Billy Idol, then to The Fix. All of those people passed. The record company suggested Corey Hart, who sang Sunglasses at Night, but Forsey didn't think it was a good fit, so they went back to Simple Minds, and Chrissy Hine, who was married to the lead singer, Jim Kerr, convinced them to do it. Simple Minds added some parts to the song, like the la, la, yeah. la, la, yeah. and it became their biggest hit. See? Wow. You always oh, yeah. have to be open to new ideas. That's right. Yeah. That's the moral of the story. You can't get too set in your ways. Yep. Wisdom. Yeah. That's what the nine at nine is all about. Yeah. yeah. I almost don't want it to end, but it has to. <laughs> yeah, number I feel one. Like maybe we can get out of this nosedive here pretty soon. Here's another great video put together by a writer and director named Vugar Uffendi. It's about movies that are about real events or people. It's called Recreating History. Uh, the actual event on the left and how it was shot for a movie on the right. Thanks, Larry. There you go. That probably would have been helpful before we started yeah. the video. <laughs> <laughs> this is JFK. Yeah. Oh, he makes a good Lee Harvey. Never saw that movie. Was that any it good? It was good. I mm -hmm. didn't see it either. 
what I remember, 91, that was 20 years ago now. Gosh, I was only 10 when I saw it. 10? <laughs> what do you mean, your daughter was 10? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, this was good too. I never Man saw on the this. Moon. Ah, oh, he was great. I never saw the Doors movie either with Val Kilmer. Was he good in that? Why nobody's seen any of this stuff? Check that one out. Oh, uh, Fighter! I saw that. That was good. Who's in that one? That Arky guy right Mark. there. <laughs> the guy right there. <laughs> Is that Mark Wahlberg? Yeah. yeah. Remember Christian oh. Bell was in it too? Yeah, Christian Bell was brother. great in that. It's a true story, the fighter. Hmm. Isn't that something? Well. Yeah. Cinema. You know? Wow. Oh. That's nice. Yeah, that was really nice. That's the nine at nine. A really mellow start to this.